Uh, Equatorial Guinea at plus 140 hosting, well, it's not hosting, but they're playing Guinea-Bissau, who are plus 230. The draw is at plus 200. The under or over again is two at plus 105. Guinea-Bissau needs something or their, uh, their tournament is virtually over. We're playing Nigeria in the third game. Two good sides here. Tony, I'm going to come to you first here because... You got a real close up of Equatorial Guinea. They were sharp, they were energetic, and dare I say it, they could have they could have won that game against Nigeria. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm going to be realistic. Equatorial Guinea could have won that game, especially during the uh, the latter stages where it was kind of end to end, and instead of to Nigeria being dominant, Guinea-Bissau had some chances as well. I mean, Equatorial Guinea, sorry, had some chances as well. So I do look at Equatorial Guinea to draw this game just because I feel like Guinea, I feel like with Equatorial Guinea, their best chances against Nigeria were when Nigeria allowed them into the game. I feel like Guinea-Bissau will do that to a sense because I didn't really see Guinea-Bissau offer that much against Ivory Coast. But it's more of, do Guinea, do Equatorial Guinea take this game by the scruff of his neck? Do they try and stamp their authority? Do they try and play their style of football against Guinea-Bissau? So I'm not sure there'll be a lot of goals in this. Guinea-Bissau hasn't scored yet in the tournament, and Equatorial Guinea did score the opening goal of the game. So I'm not looking to see that there's many uh, goals in a sense. So I'll probably go with like an under two and a half goals just to be on the safe side. Equatorial Guinea can, can do something in this game. I feel like we saw them in the last AFCON when they got to the round of 16. They are a capable side. So if you're going to go for a money line for Equatorial Guinea, I won't be surprised there. But for me, I'm going definitely going for under two and a half goals. Yeah, Equatorial Guinea, their tournament future is basically here in their own hands. They go and win the game, Kwaku, four points guaranteed to uh, basically progress. And you're getting plus 140 and you're getting plus 200 for them to score twice. Um, it's going to be a really, really uh, interesting game, especially with the way that they play, because I thought Guinea-Bissau were quite timid. Maybe nervous, but I maybe I put a, a bit of the uh, the onus on playing the Ivory Coast in the first game with the nation behind them. I'm wondering if that we might see a better Guinea Bissau. You'd hope so, because like you said, Flash, they were very, very timid in the first game. And I was disappointed. The player that I've been telling everybody to look out for, Frank Alino, who's playing this football in Michland in Denmark. They're calling him the new Sadio Mane. He was on the bench. He came off the bench and injected some life in the game against the Ivory Coast. So hopefully for the guinea Bissau, he, he gets some minutes and some actual serious game time, because I think he's a serious, serious young player. In terms of the other players in ter uh, for, for guinea Bissau, they need to show up as well. They need to make sure that they support their attackers, because there was a lack of um, distribution, there was a lack of deliveries into the box. And guinea Bissau looked like a blunt force. Equatorial Guinea, on the other hand, against Nigeria, had a clear game plan. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to stifle Nigeria, didn't let them play football. What I will say is that both of these teams, or none of these teams, are blessed with out-and-out -out goal scorers who are going to get a goal out of nothing. And that's why I've gone for a nil-nil draw in this one. I don't expect to see any goals at all. And these teams, because of how the, the groups have panned out because of the first game, we've still got a chance to qualify out of this group, no matter the result. But Guinea-Bissau desperately, desperately need the win. They do, and that's why I think this game starts at 1-1 and all the numbers are telling you that that's where the numbers should start because it's like minus 175 for Guinea-Bissau to score, Equatorial Guinea. They're going to be going forward, so that may, may well open the door. But I tell you what, I think that this is a draw. I really do believe that the numbers are pointing us to a draw because it suits it suits one and the other one should be fighting for their tournament lives. Let's have a little look at the official pits because you've got nil-nil, correct score at plus 500. I'm loving these selections, by the way. They're so sort of off the cuff. I've got draw at plus 200, brings in the nil-nil and the 1-1 one, one, and draw an under two and a half at plus 225, basically coupling again the nil-nil and the 1-1. One, one. OK, I'm liking this. We don't normally... I might have to start using some of these in the old uh, Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga or Serie A. Foxy, Guinea-Bissau beat Ecuador Guinea last time. They played as well 3-0. But Foxy, you saw them. They were like a rabbit in the headlights. Bit different when you get to a tournament and it's put up or shut up. They look like... They, it, the stage might just be a bit too big for them. If they do uh, manage to uh, get through it, then, yeah, we might see a better Guinea-Bissau. Thank <laughs> you.